Welcome to another episode of Girls in the Quantum. Susan the Love Hiker here with Nancy Pentilla from Timmins, the Quantum Healer. And we are about to dive into the crazy topic of self-sabotage <laughs> and how to get into wholeness again. Nancy, good morning. <laughs> good morning, gorgeous. Good morning, everyone. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we have a story about self-sabotage if you'd want to share, Susan. (laughs) Well, this is how I know how far we've come from self-sabotage and not that we don't self-sabotage, but yesterday, everybody in the audience, yesterday we recorded the most epic, epic episode of how, what self-sabotage is all about and how, how to avoid it, how to just move from it and how to become whole. And next thing you know, we recorded two episodes yesterday, actually. It was like nearly two hours. And at the end, we're like, okay, let's stop recording now. And I go and press the button and the button wasn't even recorded. So I'm like <laughs> losing my mind thinking, what the heck? In the past, I would have been so embarrassed for making a mistake with somebody. Like making a mistake on our, with ourselves is one thing. That's already self-sabotage in itself. But when you do when you do it and you... To me, the self-sabotage would have come in the past because I've wasted your time. I've wasted my time. So I would have been kicking myself in guilt, resentment, and how stupid I am. And so in the past, I would have done that. But yesterday, I swear, I was trying to find the self-sabotage. I was just laughing so hard. There was one point where I thought, yeah, where I thought, I might just, I didn't even tell Kevin, I didn't even tell my husband that I didn't record because he would have been self-sabotaging for me. So I mean, he's a perfectionist. He really is. So I'm like, this is just hilarious. And I'm always looking at why does this happen? Why did it happen? There's always a reason. But then yesterday, there was no damn reason. I think you and I have so much fun that we forget to do the everyday things. Yeah, I know. And it wasn't a waste of time yesterday. It was a blast. Like we had a blast. I don't think I've laughed that hard and since our last time I recorded. <laughs> like oh, crazy. I love it. We just have so much fun. Can't wait till we have events and stuff too after our programs and oh, oh. my god, we have a blast. Oh no. You know what? I think laughter is so important through everyday life and everything. So yesterday, oh, geez. And then when you sent me the message throughout the day and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to find something. Am I really self-sabotage? I'm always looking at myself. And this is the thing about self-sabotage is that a lot of people, I mean, everybody self-sabotage. Everybody self-sabotage. And it's tied around self-worth. It's tied around our expectations of ourselves. So Nancy, what are your views on what self-sabotage is from your angle? Because you work with clients. People come see us, whether you come see a healer or you come see a a coach or you come see a mentor. In the end of the day, you're coming because there's something blocking you from moving forward. Whatever that forward is, it could be achieving a goal. It could be just being more happy. It could be to get away from pain, whatever it is. There's always something that is causing us to be blocked from achieving something. It doesn't have to be a big dream. It doesn't even have to be a big goal. It could be a goal that you need to achieve in a month. It doesn't matter. When we're blocked and stuck, we go see somebody to help us get out of it. Now, from our standpoint, from the practitioner standpoint, from the person who's mentoring or coaching or healing, um, not that you're healing from your ego, but that's another episode. But, um, <laughs> but here's the thing. When we see it, every time we're dealing with something that is of a self-sabotage, always, always. It's it's not that you don't know how to move forward. What's most of the time that's holding us back from achieving our goals and dreams or anything we want out of life is something we are sabotaging from within. What do you see, Nancy? Oh, absolutely. A lot of it starts with our self-worth. So if we don't see ourselves as worthy, we often sabotage our health with how we feed ourselves or who we surround ourselves with, what we watch take in energetically. Like we, you're, you know, watching the news and stuff like that. You don't even realize you're sabotaging yourself, but you are. But if you're eating Big Macs and crap like that, you're sabotaging your health, it, like physically. And uh, while well, everything's connected, your mind, body, heart, soul, it's all connected. So it's like, you could say it's physical, but it's everything. People sabotage their relationships with others because they can't really give and receive love and be vulnerable because they don't feel worthy or they don't feel safe. A lot of it is related to past traumas or losses or just having poor patterns as an example growing up, right? You can you can relearn things in life. You can change self-sabotage. I've seen it happen with tons of people, even just with energy work. 
it's been amazing. You know, people have shifted dramatically. They learn to love themselves. And when you recognize that you are a divine being, that you actually, you have a voice, you have a purpose, you have a divine calling, you have emotions that don't need to be suppressed. You need to actually express them. And you're worthy of hearing. You're worthy of being seen. Well, then things change. But a lot of people don't feel worthy. They don't feel loved or, or lovable. And they just don't feel like they're enough. So they just keep sabotaging. Like some people will sabotage with drugs, but some people sabotage with shopping, you know, or, you know, anything at all, any type of addiction or numbing, sabotaging all the time. And we don't realize it, right? I've done it in many ways. <laughs> you know, it, it that brings up a really good point because in, in in the end of the day, the whole topic of self-sabotage, isn't it really only, only tied to our level of self-worth? Much, yeah. If we did have, let's say we had the perfect self-worth, let's say we had the absolute self-worth, which doesn't exist, but let's say in theory, if we had the perfect self-worth or the ultimate, then we wouldn't be self-sabotaging, would we? No, we wouldn't. No, And I do know people with really great self-worth wonderful self-esteem that have been through so much trauma, so much loss, like so many horrible things have happened in their lives, but they, you know, they've done the work, they've done the healing, they've, oh my gosh, and now they're just thriving. And really like, there's some of the people I know with the best self-esteem, the best self-love and not in a, an egotistical way, very heart-centered, very connected to God, spirit, the creator, like they're so connected and their faith has made them realize that they are a breathing, heart-beating miracle and god created the mountains the rivers you know the animals that you love the children that you love and also thought you were a great idea so you know you're not a mistake yeah that is true i think when we look at self-worth do you think that it could be a just a 3d thing then because all of us have personal value which is from the soul level we feel it right we feel but self-worth is something that's measurable. So let's say, for example, we all have self-love, we all have self-esteem, we all even have self-confidence because a lot of us women, even for myself that has been work, working in this area for so long and have been in the corporate world, moving up the corporate ladder. So I've, I've developed my self-confidence, like it's insane. Even my self-certainty is insane. However, my self-worth, my self-worth still struggles sometimes. It's like, when my spiritual ego kicks in, I, I feel guilty for people not having. I literally have to talk myself off the ledge of feeling guilty for having. So there's a subconscious thing that I always have to be really close to and talk to within myself because uh, it, the self-worth gets knocked down because I'm looking at the rest of the world. You see what I'm saying? So it's such a delicate thing, isn't it? It is. And when you're sensitive and you're empathic and you care for humanity, it is really hard. You do struggle because you see so much suffering. You see people that are homeless or addicted, but you have to remember that your level of, of worth and wealth going down is not helping them. So when you can bring it up, you can give back, you can make a difference. You can teach them, you can guide them, you can, you can feed them, <laughs> you know, teach them how to feed themselves. Like you can help people more when your worth is up and your wealth is up. There's, it's a, there's a correlation with the two. And I used to fight with it. Like I still, you know, like where I live, there's tons of homeless here. There's a lot of addicts and you know, I don't look at them as though they're below me whatsoever. I mean, I had addictions. You know, and I self-sabotaged. I'm like, just because I'm not shooting up with heroin or taking crystal meth does not mean I'm any better. I had a shopping addiction. I, I bought beautiful dresses and things. I would buy people crazy gifts, like amounts of gifts and stuff. How embarrassing for them when they buy me one thing and I'm buying them five, right? Like I have books galore. Like I'm telling you, I have the biggest library on the planet. I have crystals when, when I started getting into the new agey stuff many years ago, oh my God, crystals galore. Like I sabotaged, these people are sabotaging in a different way, but they're not any lesser than me. So it breaks my heart driving downtown and seeing someone tripping out near the traffic. And I'm like, oh my God, I just want to stop and, and just take them with me, you know, but, but you can't, right? So if, if you bring your worth up within and you bring your wealth up, like you can buy them meals and stuff now, but you could do more with the more worth and wealth that you have. You can make a bigger difference in the world. So if you're struggling with that, then at least look at it that way. Don't feel guilty 
becoming more prosperous because know that you can make a bigger difference in so many ways. That is a perfect angle to exactly focus on because the more you focus on yourself to achieve more, the more you can give back. You cannot give, I mean, ego gives from an empty cup, right? Mm -hmm. And then empowerment gives from a filled cup. So you're right. That's the one thing that I've always struggled with is, is it luck? Is it something I've done? Is it something, you know, I've analyzed everything to the core. It's like, why do I have so much? And why do so many people not have anywhere close? And I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck. However, I do believe we're born into this physical life with a purpose. Now, my purpose maybe wasn't to become a drug addict and on the street. But the whole point is, we all come in with a purpose, with a design, with a blueprint of what we individually have to achieve. And whether you believe in reincarnation or not, I do believe in reincarnation. I do believe that we come into this life with a choice from a soul level on what lessons we want to learn. So let's learn how to learn lessons. And I, I really learned that about 15 years ago when I started studying spirituality and studying the world of energetics, right? And I really looked at, okay, why is it that one person has, the other person doesn't? Why is it that this person suffered with this and another person didn't? I really wanted to understand, like, why is it that way? And it is only purely because of the way it is designed from a soul level. We all come into this world with our own individual plan. And if you respect somebody's plan, that there is a homeless sitting on the street and you show them respect, you send them love, you don't have to cry for them because then you're just, that's judgment. That's so a bleeding heart, a bleeding heart doesn't serve. I used to do that years ago and you need a radiant heart. Absolutely. And that will, you'll never feel depleted. You'll just keep giving more and more love because it's from the creator through you. It is. I love your term. I love your brand about radiant heart. And that is the work. Let's, let's move everybody from a bleeding heart to a radiant heart. I mean, that's the first step before we even get to that empowerment level. Empowerment only comes as your heart goes from a bleeding heart to a radiant heart is that process. So you cannot have empowerment as a bleeding heart. That's full of crap. No, it'll deplete you every time. And then it'll, it'll limit you and the ability of your, of you to have an impact to serve in a, in a beautiful way. I, uh, gosh, when I was a nurse, oh my goodness, I used to cry all the time. I would come home from my shifts that were supposed to be 12 hours and they turned into 18 hours because people were alone and lonely and I wanted to make sure they were okay. And I would make my dad ball his eyes out when I came home and he was a big miner. My dad was like a big, massive teddy bear. Like people were scared of my dad if they didn't know him because he was, he was majestic, but his heart was amazing. And I, he would cry with me all the time. Right. And that was a bleeding heart. My poor dad, I got offered a full-time job as a nurse, which was impossible to get back in the day. And well, even now, and uh, he made me decline. He's like, you're going back to school. Cause we'll both end up in an asylum. Are you crazy? Like we're crying all the time. I'm like, okay, dad. Like he was so freaking cute. So I went back to school, but bleeding heart service is, oh my gosh, it'll kill you. It can literally kill you. Um, well, absolutely. So basically I think the important thing to remember here is either you got to stop saving people. And we're not here. I always say to clients that are people savers, right? You have people savers, you have people pleasers. They're very different things, yeah. <laughs> but there are a lot of people savers out there. And that when you're people saving, it means your self-worth is very low. Yeah, I used to do it both. I was the queen of people pleasing and people saving. <laughs> so my self-worth was, you know, it wasn't good. Oh my God. Yeah. And then you end up in relationships with people that will never change. And you're just constantly trying to change them and save them and blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. Talk about depleting the hell out of yourself. You know, your self-worth is horrible because you're settling for crumbs of love. You know, it's, it's horrible and abuse with that. I've done that too. Like, you know, it's you're not, not great, mm -hmm. but um, you can overcome it. You can overcome it. And once you step into that radiant heart, once you do the work, oh my gosh, your ability to love and to serve is incredible. And you'll catch yourself when you have a bleeding heart moment. I still have them sometimes. And I'm like, 
no, you know what? I'm driving down the street. And I don't have a religious label or anything, but I'm constantly praying for every person. Like, you know, it could be an elderly person with a walker who you could tell they're in pain or you just like, they're adorable. And you just want to like send them good vibes, right. From, from the creator. So like, I'm always praying for people, blessing them when I'm driving. I'm surprised I haven't crashed yet. <laughs> you know, it might happen one day. I hope I don't jinx myself, but it feels so good because you know that you are connecting with the creator, the highest source who can have an ability to create a miracle for these people who can save them and help them. We can't save everyone, but we can do something like that. Planting seeds, you know, with that intention, beautiful asking for, for help and guidance. Like that's what I do when I do healing sessions or even coaching. I'm always asking the creator to flow through me, to guide me, to create what this person needs, what kind of impact they need, but you can do it on the street. Pray for everybody. You see someone tripping out on a drug, ask the Holy spirit to infuse them. And, you know, like, Oh, I'm always doing that, but well, we that's have to have leading hearts. No, it's that's good because we can channel for them. It takes a split second, right? Yeah. Um, love. The, love and love. It, it is, it's love and light, love and light, love, love and light. light, but you can, you have to mean it. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I don't know what, I, like, I just uh, have a hang up with the, uh, when I feel it's not genuine, <laughs> like, it triggers you. I know, but not with everyone. I mean, Michael always says love and light and I feel it. I'm like, yeah, he's beautiful, right? Like I love him to pieces. He's one of my favorite souls ever. But man, sometimes like it's those ones you run into and I love it. Oh, our spirit channeled through me today. Like, you know, <laughs> the whole, yeah. Anyway, just, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no. Like, I, and I need to be more understanding of where they're coming from, I guess, in some ways, but you know what? Because you stand on behalf of the victims. That's why. Yeah. People get taken advantage of. And then they feel lesser than with people like that. They think they're their guru. Meanwhile, you can find your own strength, your own power, because they're not more powerful than you are. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit of a thing. But it is. Protective. You are very protective. My so goodness. Weird. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, th that's the thing. It's, it's you know, this, uh, the self-sabotage comes when we, I mean, what I've seen, I'm even for myself, I, the only time I really self-sabotage is when I am debilitated or shut down with my voice, when I can't express myself. And I, if I accept that, then I self-sabotage. I could see it. I could feel it coming too. It's terrible. Right. So the moment I don't feel like I have the power to speak or if somebody is intimidating me or I just what I start doing is I start numbing and I start my self-talk, then the self-talk starts and it starts saying, OK, Susan, you're a loser. Why can't you just walk away? Why can't you just tell that person the truth? And because I start questioning myself and it's terrible. And I'll tell a story of just how insidious self-sabotage is, no matter how powerful or empowered you think you are. It sneaks up like a little bitch. It really does, right? <laughs> yeah, a little bitch. Like a little <laughs> bitch, it's a little sneaky little bitch. But a few <laughs> years ago, I was working with a client who was running an MLM business. And she she wanted me to help her with bringing her team up, bringing her levels up and helping with the mindset for the team. So I was teaching them how to sell and how to manifest. It started to be just a three month. It was a three month program that I was going to go in and help them. And so I did. So within the first month, we got results and she and I got very close because we had to work very closely together because this was a quite a big team. Anyways, by August, I was so exhausted because she was very very demanding, but in a very, I love you kind of way, mm -hmm. you know how they use the That's love thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was insidious because you really, they know how to use the love word. Like they care about you. And then the, when they see that you're about to energetically let go, they can feel you and they pull you in. And it's just unbelievable. And I knew this was being done to me, but I somehow I'm aware, but I'm not doing, it's better to not be aware, by the way. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah it is. Oh, yeah. But when you're aware of it's happening and you know that it's happening to you, and you don't even do what you feel you need to do. So by the end of the three months, it was August. And this was time for me to say, okay, mission accomplished, mission achieved. 
time for me to move on. But then I couldn't because now I was seeing her as a dear friend that I had to help now. Oh my gosh, yeah. So I've just been allowed myself to be sucked into the savior. It's not even people pleasing now. It triggered my, because I have savior complex. I'm not a people pleaser. I have savior complex. Mm -hmm. So I now went from a contract to actually like doing it for free. And so starting September, the beginning of September, no joke, I, I, I said, okay, a little bit more, a little bit more, you know that and now I'm trapped as a victim. And that's me being aware even. So my awareness of September started with a little rash right there. And it, it's just a rash and, and it started getting red and then it started like cracking. You know, it's weird. So the whole month of September, October, it went all across my neck from one end to another raw, like the top two layers of skin were gone. It was raw. It was oozing liquid and blood. Oh, I looked like a freak from the Adams family. No joke. I was, <laughs> there was one day I decided to let my neck air out. So I walked out on the street and this little kid, I thought it, maybe she was five. She screamed oh, my God. At, with her mother. And I realized at that point, I forgot it was there, right? You know, women, we can tolerate a lot of pain. And it's just... yeah. we give birth and stuff. So yeah. We're, we're right. Pregnant. So I was, I was wearing, um, I was wearing all these cotton swabs and clean and napkins and Kleenex and then wrapping it with saran wrap. And it was just insane. And even Kevin was really worried about, but he goes, what do you like have some kind of cancer on your neck? Like, go see a doctor. I'm like, no, I know why this is happening. I'm not going to see a doctor is not going to do anything about it. A friend was giving me all these essential oils. It was making it worse. Yeah. Yeah. You had to fix the root issue <laughs> and say sayonara. <laughs> yeah. Sayonara. Screw the essential oils. That did shit all for me. Kevin was going to see, uh, saying, go see a doctor. And I'm like, no, I know exactly what it is. I'm not ready to fix it yet. I know what I need to do. I'm not ready yet. I knew I wasn't ready. It was a process. But at the same time, I realized today, looking back, you could always connect the dots going back. Steve Jobs, you know, quote, you can connect the dots going backwards. You just can't connect it going forwards. But at that time, I knew. So anyway, so it was November. Now it was like just crazy. It's been two months getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, oh, not even getting better. Hmm? Could you see your trachea at that point? <laughs> just kidding. I think I was scared to look at that point. Like, oh this, no, because it was, it would scab up, start healing, and then you'd have to chip it off. Because it was just <laughs> horrendous. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, so I was having a, a, a nine o'clock meeting with her one morning, beginning of November. And she was looking, I was talking, explaining what like some work stuff. And she's just, her eyes are like big looking at me on the screen. And, and I'm, I'm like, what's, what do you, what, what's your face for? You know, she's like, do you not see what I'm looking? Do you not see what I see right now? And I'm like, what are you seeing? She goes, what is going on with your neck? I decided to expose it on the, on the screen. Right. And I'm like, oh, this thing uh, is because I I'm doing something I don't want to do. And I know that I'm doing it against my will. So this is what's happening. So I just need to do something about it, you know? And she's like, well, you need to go see a doctor. So she's not asking me about why. Yeah, and she's supposedly, know, she's supposedly very spiritual, right? Yeah. So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling victimized. This is why. And I'm not speaking up for myself. Because, and I'm, I'm realizing that this person doesn't have my back, right? I'm saying it to her. Yeah. Anyways, she's like, well, you got to go see a doctor. I'm worried about you. I don't want something to happen to you. Well, of course not. No, right? you're serving a purpose for her. She doesn't want anything to happen to you. Isn't it crazy? So I, and, and I said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll do something about it soon. And she said, okay. And then went right into business with me. And then on top of that, right after that, she gave me more responsibilities, more obligations, more like throwing things because she knows oh. how to work people. Yeah, she yeah. knows that if you give me something that is impossible, I'm going to go at it like you wouldn't believe. That's who I am. Yeah, I bust the impossible, but at, at my sacrifice. So I, I could do to myself. That's fine. But if I'm doing it for somebody else and getting no value back, that's when it's self-sabotage. So anyways, at that moment, I realized 
yeah, no, she's never going to have my back. I, I was, you know, there's a part of us inside that just hopes that the person will realize, the hopes the person will change, the hopes the person will see what you see, hopes somebody will just have my back. Yeah. Like I have hers. So anyway, after that, I realized, no, this is not good. That same week, I told her we're done. She never really spoke to me. Again. Like we literally cut ties. Like she literally oh, cut them, ties. Uh, purpose for her. <laughs> so much for the friendship, right? <laughs> like no. And it was just such an eye. This is 2017. This is so eye-opening. And no joke. I said to my husband, I said, okay, I just did the deed. I don't need to see a doctor. Watch this. It's all going to heal. Within the same week, within days, it started getting better and better, where it's like not even scarred. Powerful, eh? Your voice is powerful. Your truth is powerful. You have to get used to speaking up, to saying what you feel, to use, like letting your soul speak, you know, like that's your truth. But yeah, I, I remember when you saved me from, <laughs> you were my savior because right at the beginning of COVID, my, like we have friends that rescue kids, right? And from human trafficking. And I was all obsessed with human trafficking and pedophilia. And I had to make everyone aware to protect their children and that this is a thing. And yet a lot of people don't want to face it because it's the ugliest side of humanity. So remember when I met with you on Zoom and I had that big rash on my throat and you're like, Nancy, what's going on with your throat? And I said, well, you know, with the human trafficking and pedophilia, and I was really hyper, I was overly passionate, like psycho about it. And I'm like, I need to wake people up about this. I've been posting. I'm trying to wake people up. People are in denial, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, Nancy, it's too low of a vibration for you. Like, you don't need to know details of how the kids are, like what they're going through. Because remember those guys that were saving kids, I get like details. Sometimes they'd send me and like, I couldn't handle it. It was making me more and more crazy, right? And uh, and then the minute you told me to be part of the solution and not know the details of the problem, the rash went away in three days. So that was one way of self-sabotage. I can get overly passionate about things sometimes that aren't necessarily you know, the best things, but you taught me a lot in that moment. And then years ago, um, I've talked about this, I think with you before about being in a women's shelter and I had a really psycho boyfriend and uh, that's his nickname, psycho. Anyway, <laughs> I don't see him anywhere anymore. Thank God. But, you know. Um, but yeah, he was a major, major manipulator, a major jealous guy, like really crazy. And I was so like, I mean, I would party when I was young, but I would drink. I didn't know much about drugs and stuff. And this guy must've been on cocaine the night he tore my whole apartment apart and tore the doors off the hinges. Like it was nuts. I thought I was going to die. And anyway, I still, I ended up in a women's shelter. My friends made me go to wake up. I didn't, he didn't beat me up or anything, but they were like scared of what it, it was going to become. So I go to the women's shelter for three, four days and I'm like, oh, I'm good. Come out and I want to rescue this guy. Oh, poor thing. You know, like we don't have to date, but he has no friends. Right? <laughs> There's a red flag. Um, and I needed to help him get over his drinking, uh, possible drug addiction. You know, poor guy has no one. So I was seeing him behind everyone's back trying to help them. And my brother found out. He caught me. Saw my vehicle parked three blocks away from this guy's place. So I was trying to help him. And my brother was like, mm -mm. like he came to the door and he rung the doorbell and he was like, going to come up and get me. And anyway, it was crazy. So then, you know, I had to give up that connection. Thank God. Cause that's when I met my husband, he was basically my hero at the time. And uh, yeah, but yeah, self-sabotage do anything for someone else. Don't even know who the hell you are because everything's about this person and you're trying to rescue them. They're on a pedestal, no matter what they do to you tear your whole place apart and it happened several times where you tear my apartments apart somewhat but and, and like I couldn't talk to people like I couldn't even shake hands with a client I couldn't like if I came home from work five minutes late he's trying to call me and I was cheating you know it was like crazy the stuff I put up with but when you've had trauma as a kid or anything like that you don't have the self-worth like you don't even realize you're carrying shame and guilt and it's causing you to put up with crap because your self-worth is, is so diminished. It's, it's gone. It's depleted. But yeah. So that was a really beautiful way. Wow. You, know, you that, really, I'm telling you, it was nasty. You really, I mean, I think, I think everybody, but I think particularly you and I, I've, I've met quite a few of you 
angels on the earth that have other angels always around you or protecting you because it's unbelievable some of the antics that we get up to that we we survive it you are like that another client of mine cindy brown i mean her her story is so powerful Catherine ann wilson angels along the way like i know don't be horrible Catherine. we love Catherine. it's like all you gals have and me too i mean sometimes when i think back to my life how I've been in this bubble for the longest time and without even thinking about the consequences. And yet somebody or something has always been there to move me along. And I, I, and this, I still haven't come to a conclusion of whether or not I'm willfully ignoring things and then creating that path of, uh, of, these angels or is it because i'm born with these you know that's a hard question whether i'm born into this life with all these angels i think that we all have there's a balance between we can control the path but yet there's another angle of it where we're always surrounded by protection so i think the important thing here is that when we're dealing with self-worth and it's particularly for all the, the great women that I've I've come across, like you, like Catherine, like Cindy, like so many others, I have seen that a lot of the trauma, particularly, I have so it seems like I attract these clients that nowadays in the last two, three years, even Kevin's like, oh my gosh, every one of these women that you attract somehow has had some kind of early childhood sexual trauma. And I'm like, is it because the stats are so high or is it because me, I'm just attracting them all? I don't know. But rebuilding boundaries and standards is the key work from the very beginning, even with our children, especially our children, teach them boundaries and standards. So important. Yeah. But when you don't know that yourself, how are you going to teach them? Right. They, they learn by our example. Like I, when I found out I was, want, well, when I decided I even want to start trying to become a mother, I started doing more work on myself. And then when I found out I was pregnant, that was it. I went nuts on work on myself. I had to be the best mom, you know, and it's easy with my son. I'm like super obsessed as you know, and he's super old. He's an old soul. He's wise. He he knows boundaries. He, he went through his own stuff, of course, with people, but nothing severely traumatic which I'm happy it happened to me. I'm happy because I wouldn't want it to have happened to him. If I wasn't aware of it, maybe it would have, I would have go, let him go sleep somewhere. He shouldn't, or, you know, like I was always super particular and oh my God. But back in the day when I was growing up, nobody really talked about that kind of stuff, you know? So things did happen in my childhood, but you know what? Most of my clients have come forward with stuff like that, yeah. but I always thought I was the only one growing up because I never talked about it. Like there was so much shame, right? And you're not going to talk about it. My dad would have murdered these guys, like a big giant dad. Like he would, oh my God, he was such a protector. He would have, he would have gone nuts. Like he was such a protective man, like teddy bear, but oh, don't mess with my family. And um, yeah, never, I always thought I was the only one. And you had this complex of like feeling lesser than, and that there's something wrong with you because that happened. You know, there were so many blocks. But then as I started even just doing nursing as a co-op student, I started to see people going through so much and realizing I'm not the only one where stuff's happened. Right. And it's common, it's huge. And I feel like humanity is going through such an awakening right now. So there's a lot of rebirth going on. So a lot of people's traumas are coming up at this time. The last couple of years, seeing more and more people coming forward with it. Men too, like it's happened to men. So yeah, it's huge. It is huge. I think that's one of the things that I'm look I'm seeing a lot of some kind of trauma that breaks all our boundaries down in one swoop. Like literally, when that happens, that kind of event happens when somebody's either molested, raped, or whatever it is, even the most simple molestation can do damage for life because you're you're, you're victimized at that point. You're, yeah. They've just invaded our space. And there, and and then all our walls are just taken. So rebuilding from scratch is a very powerful thing, and it's really important that as adults that we learn how to build boundaries. And I mean, I go as as the distinction between standards and boundaries. A lot of women out there, 
I don't know. I don't think I see this in men because I work with men too. It's women. It's like all of a sudden we feel guilty for having standards. Like, no, my preference is this. So therefore I will choose this. Like, what is the problem with choosing when you have to choose one of many things? Don't you have to let go of the other things to choose one? Or do we just take on everything? Right? Yeah, that's true. We have preferences. We have certain energies we're attracted to or their looks or whatever. Like, I mean, I married someone that was not typical at all for me. And that happens to a lot of people. Like, but I mean, you can have that preference and find it. Right. So a lot of people do. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think I go into like hyper bitch level when it comes to that. <laughs> I had a client a few years ago, she was dating, she's been online dating for like years, like eight, nine years, whatever, still single, wow. right? And I'm so I'm looking at her patterns. And she keeps coming back on dates, giving me the data. So we analyze data. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, okay, well, it seems like the pattern is every time you go out with a certain type of man, in terms of the culture, or whatever it is, the tradition of this type of man, it's always the same type of man. So why are you still accepting dates with that type of man when you don't like the behavior, right? Or you don't like the way they look or whatever the case may be. And she's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. You mean I, I can actually say I don't want to go out with that type of guy or that culture of guy or whatever. And I'm like, well, if you don't, if it doesn't serve you, if it's not aligned with you, then yeah, you have to choose not to. And she's like, well, I feel bad because I, that not that racism? I'm like, it's not racism. What, all of a sudden now a preference becomes a racism or prejudice. Uh, I, I mean, you, you have to have your preferences. It's not like, so I have a preference. I've always had a preference. I love blondes and blonde hair, blue eyed people across the board. I just, I have this obsession with blonde hair and blue eyes, right? And especially in a man, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to go. So I was single for 10 years. I went out with the United Nations across the board. Like I was in a 10 year relationship with a Jamaican. I mean, you can't call me racist when I've hit, hit the whole United Nations of cultures, Russian, you name it, man. Been there. <laughs> You did the so, labor, did you? <laughs> yeah, the, just so that you don't call me a racist, I'm going to go out with every single culture in the whole <laughs> damn world, okay? Yeah. And and then I'll tell you which one I choose. But the whole thing is, you know, I ended up marrying a blonde hair, blue eyed, but I went out with every single brunette, black hair, brown hair, whatever, bald hair, whatever, right? <laughs> but just because I'm not marrying a a, a brunette, a, a brown haired guy does that mean I hate them no it's like so you know you know how many men are going to look at me and say she's not skinny enough for me or she's not slim enough for me or she she doesn't have a nice enough butt for me I don't care you have the right to choose <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly oh absolutely so, so it's ridiculous so she was sabotaging herself by not speaking up her truth to herself not even allowing that thought to even come through her own heart. So there's a big disconnect in the throat chakra there, right? Because you're thinking it, but your heart's not allowed to feel it. So there's a big disconnect, which is all, a lot of us is the throat chakra. So anyways, when I said that to her, I said, no, then you're just going to change the filter on your online dating that you don't want to meet any men of like this, this filter, right? And she's like, okay. But the whole thing is she didn't even know that she was permitted to have choice and preference. So she was sabotaging her desire to be with love. So she, instead, she stayed in a behavior that took her farther away from finding love. Isn't it crazy? But people are so um, labeled these days with anything they do or say, you know, like, Oh, there's so many crazy stories where people will judge someone and suddenly they're a racist or they're whatever, like just some kind of label and they're not like, I know they're not, or, you know, like there'd be clients and stuff. I, I had a, uh, well, I have a friend, her daughter to wear a white coat to class and they called her a racist and they've been bullying her. She had to quit school because they said, because of her white coat, she's a racist. What? Like oh, all the white supremacy thing. I guess so. I'm like, oh my God, because she wore a white coat and she's dark skinned. She's 
like this dark, beautiful creature. And yeah, because she wore a white coat. Wow. So it's, it's, our, our society is very crazy. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> so people yeah. are really afraid to speak their truth now because they're scared. It might sound like something that they're not, or, you know, so I can get where she's coming from because, you know, but that doesn't make it right. No, because the thing that she's sabotaging is her dream love story. Yeah. So right? eight or nine years of dating online. Oh my God. I would have given up after like, I would not even bother. I'd be like growing old alone with 20 cats instead. Like, I, I don't know, man, I would get tired of that. Like, well, yeah, it all, keep, it occupies so much of our time. That oh. online dating thing, if you don't really tune in that magnet you're wasting a lot of time and of course everything else in her life was always crumbling um but the, she was successful in her business she, but it's her personal self-mastery that suffered her child was in depression and you can't be spreading yourself thin all the time you're self-sabotaging at that point everything is dropping so i think one of the things that i want to go into is what are some of the tools to help you really number one recognize that you might be self-sabotaging. And the next thing is, what are some of the things that, Nancy, I know that you have so many tools in your toolbox that really, how to overcome. One of the things I do well is I detect when it's happening. And then there are other tools. I'll let you go into the tools, but one of the ways to detect that you might be self-sabotaging, and this is something that I recognize in myself early on, is I sabotage success. Because my programming was, oh, Susan, you're Chinese, you're second class in this country, but my, my, my father. So yeah, stay under the radar. Don't be seen. Don't be heard. Don't cause trouble. Because if you're seen and heard, because I'm loud, I'm, I'm, I've always been a loud mouth. I love that. Yeah, I've always <laughs> been a loud I love it. <laughs> trouble making loud mouth. And my father used to always say, don't cause trouble, Susan. You know, we're, you know, we're second class here. We're in Canada and you know, the white man's all powerful. So um, I, yeah, I've so, and to me, success is for other people, not for us. Right. And so I had, I was each time I was going for success, I would hit blocks and I would wonder why is it that I'm hitting blocks to success? Because And I realized, oh, who are you, Susan? You're a nobody. So I had to break through all that because I was sabotaging success because my worthiness to go to next levels had to be challenged. And this is the thing. Our self-worth is not an absolute thing. It's an evolving thing. Each time you want something bigger, you're going to have to challenge your self-worth because it hits a ceiling. So what do you think breakthrough is? What do you think? So each time I wanted something, if I'm not getting it and I'm measuring what's going on, that's when I know I'm, I'm self-sabotaging. Something I'm in my programming is telling me, oh, Susan, you're not enough. Who are you? Well, that's that's for other people. Why are you going for that? You're a nobody. You come from this. You're Chinese. You should be, you should be at the Chinese restaurant cooking away in the back. You know, that type of thing, because that's my programming. So self-sabotage also occurs when you want something in your heart but you stop yourself from getting it because somehow it's not for you, but it's for other people. That's a big self-sabotage out there. So what are some of the tools that you use, Nancy, when you go through these self-sabotage or these boundaries that you're infringing upon? How do you reconnect with your heart? Well, the, the most powerful work that I love to do with people is shadow work, like integrating the shadow. So you embrace your humanity and your divinity. You recognize that you are a divine being created by the highest source of love, you know, and once you realize that, and it takes some work to do that, but it's really not that difficult. We overcomplicate life, right? But when you recognize that and then start to have more compassion for your humanity, for the mistakes you've made, for the traumas you've endured, you start to love and embrace your inner child and even embrace the weird magic that you have like we're all weirdos at the core somehow right like there's something crazy about you that you likely hide from the world yet people would love it and find it so endearing because people love real and raw so we sabotage ourselves by hiding parts of us that we are ashamed of our uniqueness you, you want to fit into society well that's freaking boring sorry but you don't you're not born to fit in you're born to be you so embrace that weirdness right that uniqueness but a lot of people hide that and they hide the parts of them that have been traumatized. Of course, you know, they, they have these shadows about 
who they really are, the shame, the guilt, it's not because of what's been done to them in their lives as a child, or, you know, maybe you were raped as a 20 year old or, you know, anything at all, or you may have, like, I know someone who actually raped someone when he was young and he is a good person, but he made that mistake when he was young and he beats himself up every day. He's actually a friend of mine. And, but I see the good in him and he's done so much to work on himself. He had severe trauma as a kid, severe. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've helped him somewhat, but he, he's not a client, but it's like, you have to forgive and let go of these things, learn from them and embrace your entire being. It's about having compassion for yourself and feeling safe with someone to do that work. You have to feel safe with the person who's guiding you and you will get to that power within you. It's not that I'm ever, ever any more powerful than anyone. I mean, I've had tons of shit happen in my life. I'm, I never felt powerful, but when I started doing the work and embrace who I really am on all levels, that's where the magic kicked in. And, you know, it's not a, a thing where you love yourself in a conceited way. You love your soul. You love every part of your story eventually because you are who you are today with the compassion and, and empathy to be able to help others because you want to help end suffering and you want people to see the love that they are that you see in them, right? So it can lead you to a whole different purpose in your life, but we've all been anointed and appointed for a soul calling. If we are stuck hiding our shadow, we're stuck fragmented in our being, you're never going to reach it. Never. So you have to do the shadow work and grounding yourself. Like one way <laughs> I said this in the recording yesterday <laughs> is actually <laughs> sitting sitting, not just standing with your feet in the grass or the sand sitting. So your root chakra is right in that sand. It's like butt cheeks right here, you know, in the sand or in the grass and you're absorbing that beautiful energy, right? The energy of the earth. And you can like breathe in the force of the creator, God, and just breathing that power through you. And it's going down through you into the earth, through your root chakra. Cause that's where you feel safe, right? Your root chakra is messed up which most of us are, you're not going to feel safe to do the work, to go into your heart, to actually do the work. You're not going to feel safe to be vulnerable in this world. And you're certainly not going to be safe, feel safe to follow your dreams, to be prosperous, to have successful relationships. One with yourself, obviously that's the foundation for everything, but with others, like you're going to be sabotaging. So those are two big, big things. There's all kinds of things you can do, but I think like there's mirror work, there's there's so much, but prayer is huge. Like if you ask for guidance, we do have angels around us. Trust me. There's so many crazy stories. We can talk about angel stories at some point. Like, oh my gosh, we have angels. We're never alone. We have guides and yeah, they want to punch us in the face probably sometimes because we're not freaking listening, right? Because <laughs> we're sabotaging ourselves and they're trying to guide us to love ourselves, to embrace ourselves, to have compassion. We're, we're never alone. We're never alone. But a big thing is the shadow work and, and grounding. But there's a whole process. I mean, there's so many other things. It's crazy. But just start with those two things. And and yeah, you, you'll probably need a coach, a yeah. healer. You'll need a guide that you trust. Not one who says you need them because <laughs> you don't need them to be your power. You need them to guide you mm -hmm. to your own power. I think you're, I think the most important thing out of all this that you just said, just to recap, is that we need to start feeling safe in our own body again. I think so many of us have beamed ourselves up like Scotty to the Star Trek spaceship. But in the end of the day, we're still a human body. We need to start learning how to feel safe in this body again, because, yeah, no, it's there's a, there's pain here in their struggle. And there's a lot of stuff in the past that we tend to just push down and it's suppressed and there's only so much this human imperfect perfectly imperfect body can take so it's time to really go into what i said to one of my clients we we literally had to go into her dark closet and sift through all those skeletons and we even had to go find you know broken toenails like literally everything she went in there and we did the work it was hard it was hard to it is hard. And, but like you said, with trust, um, with somebody who can see you and hear you, but at the same time, what I always focus on, and this is why I love creating this community with you, Nancy, because it's so important that as we're taking people through the dark space to really lead them into closer to the bright light, we're all in the light, but it's just as some people are further behind where it's just a speck of a twinkle of a light to others that are just, the light's just shining over them. 
But in the end of the day, I think it's really important that we guide people through their healing, through feeling safe in their body as we're teaching them how to see again. So I'm like the quantum optometrist. I put new glasses on you. I focus on everything that's measurable. Feeling good is not measurable because you can feel good, but also I've seen people pretend to feel good. And then because you can mess with your mind to make yourself believe whatever you want. Absolutely. And the big thing is you have to recognize that, well, well, first of all, I never felt safe in my body. I was often like out there. It was so much better to be in that spirit world than to be in this temple. <laughs> I call it a temple now, but it was a place of pain when I was a child. So, you know, it just, it never felt safe until like many years ago. It's been decades now, but I mean, I was like, people would be like, oh my God, you're so like out there, right? <laughs> I was like, I'm not going in this thing. <laughs> I'm like, no, thanks, man. My aura and my soul are like traveling around and it's just there kind of guiding. But, but yeah, you got to get into the body. But the biggest thing is recognizing the amount of adversity you've had in your life will level, level out with the amount of miracles to come. You do the work. It just balances out. It truly does balance out, but you got to do the work. You have to be friends, become friends with pain. You know, you can't run towards pleasure and avoid pain. We need to feel to heal. And our, um, emotions are energy in motion. So if you're not allowing them to be expressed, your body doesn't lie and you end up with dis-ease or dysfunction, you know? So like, even if you're drinking green juice, like every single day and you're eating healthy, if you're suppressing your emotions, you're still going to get sick. You are going to get sick. And like, it could be MS, it could be cancer, anything, heart disease. You will not be in your healthiest state. I don't care how much green juice you drink. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's great. It'll raise your vibration somewhat, but those emotions will tie you down and your shadow will become very heavy. So doing the work's going to be a bitch. Like you said, a freaking bitch. You're drinking the green juice. I'm healthy. I'm whole. No, you're not. It's only one aspect. You have a mind, body, heart, and soul to deal with. And if your soul's been scarred by trauma, we can heal that together but you got to put the work in and you, you need to invest in yourself. You know, you have to, you're important. You'll Being fix your awesome. car, you'll pay five yeah. grand for your pet to get a surgery, but you're not worth fixing. Well, not that you're broken, but you're not worth healing. Of course you are. Well, that's the thing. Being honest with ourself is the hardest work I find out there. It's oh, yeah. really the hardest work. And there's here's another self sabotage that I know is going on: excess weight, un undesirable weight, or unhealthy weight. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying a healthy weight, but unhealthy weight or weight that you don't even want there. That is a form of self sabotage. You, especially for that is the biggest biggest clue that there's self sabotage is that there's an unhealthy excess weight that is not good for your health and. You can try to pretend that you're all one with yourself and self-love, but the truth is always there. So self, one of the big ways of self-sabotage out there in this part of the world now, I'm sorry, it's it's excess unhealthy weight. Oh, it's unbelievable. Everywhere. Children too. So lots of children. And it's heartbreaking. That's why I created Nourish Soul because, you know, it's, it's embodying everything, but there's a meal plan. It's an anti-inflammatory lifestyle all around. There's a meal plan, there's a grocery list, there's all kinds of recipes and it's a plan that you follow because you're not, you can't like totally sabotage everything you like. You have to have food that actually tastes good for people who are used to having rich foods, right? And, uh, but you have to also heal your energetic body, your mind, your heart. You have to heal at the same time. And then you're going to get those results that you want. It's a process of healing as a whole being. But yeah, our society is so sick. Yes, there's beauty at every size, but it's not healthy. It's not healthy. It Correct. just isn't. We don't need to be sick. Like I have beautiful friends that are, are bigger and they're they're incredible inside and out. I love them to pieces. I don't even really see weight when I'm with them. Like I'm just connecting to their souls, right? So much that, but they complain about it and they're having health issues and it, it's sad. They don't deserve to have health issues. You know, but you have to want to change. Absolutely. So I think we can wrap up this talk on self sabotage and how to become <laughs> whole. Oh the truth about self sabotage and how to become whole. But yes, just just recognize self sabotage is there as an indicator 
to show us the truth of what is really going on. And, and there's nothing wrong with sabotaging ourselves. It's just our truth. Don't judge it. Don't look at it like a negative thing. But what is negative about it is if you choose to ignore it. Yes, the work it takes is very difficult. It means being honest with yourself and working through feeling safe to even see it again, to wear those glasses, because you've taken off those glasses, you've thrown it in the closet, you didn't even want to see all that. But you know what? Here's my here's the thing I'm going to leave everybody with. What, through On the other side of pain and struggle, the understanding of the pain and struggle is magic and miracles. So if you're going to avoid pain and struggle, you're avoiding also the gift that comes with it and all the miracles that come with it. The biggest work that I do is teaching people how to see the miracles and the magic around them while they're going through struggle. It's not one or the other. Beautiful. And, you know, I've had people where just with the energy healings, they have done wonders. And just within three sessions, tons of pain is gone. And then they're really ready to step into the work, right? And it's not so hard anymore. They're actually in flow with it. We all have an anointed path for our soul, but we have free will. So our free will can screw us over. And then we don't live that divine path. And that's when people are on their deathbed going, oh my God, I didn't live my path. You, you know that you sabotaged your entire life. You never did the work. It was easier to be in your discomfort than it was to step out of your comfort zone. And like, you're comfortable with your discomfort. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, you need to be comfortable with moving forward and being all of who you can be. And even if it's painful, embrace it. We've done it. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think we're so, co we're so comfortable with the mirror work or shadow work that I literally have tea parties in the dark cave with my own shadow all the yeah. time. Like <laughs> having, having a rave party, everything is just perfectly beautiful. Right. Party. I want to come to one of those parties. That sounds oh, fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, you have to come. But I, I wanted to thank everybody for listening. And for those of you who are on the YouTube, watching this on YouTube, please give your comments on, on what you've done in your own work in terms of what you've recognized as self-sabotage or any questions you may have. But I, I, you know, Nancy and I have all these stories of our own and through our clients, but I, but we're, we don't have all the answers and we want to engage some conversation around this and having a community where everybody feels safe to say something. And then, no, there is no bashing here. Everything you say is your truth. And we never judge that, but we want to hear your comments, put your comments down on, things that you've done, even tools that you have that helped you overcome self-sabotage. And let's 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 build a, a, a conversation dialogue around this because it's really important that we start using our voice so that we can avoid self-sabotage, right, Nancy? Oh yeah, huge, bro. <laughs> your voice matters, your life matters. You are a miracle. You are all miracles. You need to own it. You can get there. You're amazing. So, well, love you. On that note, from the love sprinkler, sprinkling love on everybody in this episode, <laughs> uh, we will end the conversation here. And thank you so much for listening, everybody. Thank you, Nancy. Love you so much. I'm so I'm so happy you're here with me. Oh, I'm so grateful. I love you. Love you, love you, love you. Love you all. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. And stay tuned for the next episode. Bye.